Hey everybody, you're watching We The Fandom, where we discuss comic books, pop culture, and the fandom experience. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to see more content. How's it going everybody? Jacob here at We The Fandom, and today I'm reviewing the finale of Hawkeye, and I'm going to get right into it. So the episode starts off with Eleanor Bishop meeting with Wilson Fisk, who, by the way, had a much larger role in this episode than I thought he would. Through it, we learn that Kate's father had a mountain of debt when he died with the Kingpin, and that Eleanor has been paying it off all these years by having some sort of deal with him. She was also the one who killed Armand in the first episode, but now she wants to end the deal with the Kingpin in order to keep her daughter safe, since this is all coming too close to home. Of course, you don't just say no to Wilson Fisk, so he sends Kazi and the tracksuits to Eleanor's company holiday party in order to kill her. Now, Jack Duquesne, strangely enough, is not only innocent of any crimes, having been framed by Eleanor, his own fiance, but he's kind of a dummy. He really is as oblivious as he's been acting. He's pretty much just a dumb rich boy, though he is an excellent swordsman and he uses his skills to fight the tracksuits when they attack the party. Clint and Kate are trying to keep the party safe using the LARPers that we've seen in the last few episodes who are posing as waiters, trying to help them find the bad guys, but also to help usher people out when stuff is going down. We also get to see Clint in a Hawkeye costume from the comics. Not the classic costume, which I've always wanted to see in the MCU, but the costume from the Matt Fraction run, which the series is based off of, which I really wasn't a fan of the story or those costumes, but it works well enough in the show. We also get to see the final battle between the tracksuits and Clint and Kate, and we get to see a plethora of trick arrows, a lot of them we have already seen, but now they are actually used in a cool way because Clint isn't having to babysit Kate, and Kate has actually used some of the arrows before, so she has experience with them now. Although one of them is kind of a cop-out, because right at the beginning of the fight, Clint shoots a magnetic arrow that takes away all the tracksuit's guns, obviously making it more of like a fist arrow fight. But there is a funny moment at the end where Kate shoots a pin particle arrow at one of the trust -a bro trucks and shrinks it with the tracksuits inside, which then gets snatched up by this little owl. Which means that at some point, that truck is going to fall out of the sky unless Clint or Scott Lang is able to find that owl with the truck. After having crashed the holiday party and spending a good five minutes or so half fighting, half complimenting Kate Bishop, Yelena Belova finally makes it to Clint and beats the crap out of him. Even though Clint tells her what actually happened to Natasha, well, he doesn't tell her what actually happened because he doesn't think that she'll believe him, but he gives her the gist, telling her that she sacrificed herself to save the world. Now, Yelena doesn't believe him until he does the whistle from the Black Widow movie, at which point they reconcile, which was nice because, as I mentioned before, other than this being a series to set up a new Hawkeye, it was also kind of meant to be the goodbye to Black Widow that we didn't really get from the Avengers in Avengers Endgame. Unfortunately, we don't know what happens with Yelena after that, and I gotta say, I wasn't really a fan of her depiction in the show. Yelena in Black Widow was cool, but in Hawkeye, she's acted very uncharacteristic of her comic book counterpart, and I know... People want to see, you know, character growth and stuff, but she's supposed to be a ruthless assassin. Instead, most of her screen time in the show has shown her turning into Kate's bestie. And I despise the word bestie, but unfortunately, it is very accurate. We did get to see Kingpin fight Hawkeye, just not the Hawkeye that you were probably expecting. He ends up fighting Kate Bishop after he tries to kill Eleanor, which is definitely not as exciting, but it's still fun to see Kingpin throw his weight around because his strength and durability borders on superhuman. In the end, though, he does get temporarily knocked out by a bunch of trick arrows, as well as Eleanor hitting him with her car. Maya Lopez, who in the last episode had begun to suspect that Kazi and the Kingpin were behind her father's death, has a chance to confront the Kingpin, but doesn't. Instead, she just leaves, pretending like nothing happened. But later on, she fights and kills Kazi, and seemingly kills Fisk by shooting him in the head, mirroring this panel from the comics. But if you've recently watched Squid Game, spoilers for those who haven't, then you'd know that if you don't see the body, you can't be sure that they're dead. And I find it hard to believe that they would bring in a great actor like Vincent D'Onofrio and an amazing character like Kingpin just to die in his first appearance. Now, I really thought that there was a chance that we would see Spider-Man show up, but he didn't. Spoilers for those who haven't seen Spider-Man No Way Home, but the ending of that movie takes place around the same time as Hawkeye. It even shows him swinging past the tree at Rockefeller Center. Now, I wasn't expecting him to have a real interaction with Hawkeye. I thought they might just show him swinging by. But I suppose even a cameo like that is hard to pull with Sony. Now, something interesting that I wasn't really expecting was that the watch, the same watch that kicked off this show, appearing in the black market auction, the watch that the tracksuits were trying to get a hold of and that Hawkeye was trying to get back along with the Ronin costume, belonged to his wife, who was Agent 19. She was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent before, likely before they had kids and maybe even before they got married. That's why she's been able to help Hawkeye investigate stuff during this series. That's why she told Clint that she understands him better than anyone else. 
She might have actually been Clint's partner in S.H.I.E.L.D. before Natasha. This even calls back to a scene in Avengers Age of Ultron, the movie in which we found out that Clint has a family in the first place. At the beginning of that movie, despite saying that he doesn't have a girlfriend, when Cap catches him on the phone with someone he calls Ma'am, he tries to hide it by saying that he does have a girlfriend. And when the Avengers meet Clint's family, Tony Stark jokingly calls them agents, so it's possible that they were laying the groundwork for this a while ago. Now in Marvel Comics, Agent 19 is Barbara Morse, aka Mockingbird, a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and superhero who has been married on and off to Clint Barton. Of course, Clint's wife in the MCU is named Laura. Now, is it possible that she just changed her name to keep her identity secret? Yes. But, there is also a Barbara Morse Mockingbird in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. series, which may or may not be canon. So, do I think we'll get more about her past, or do I think they'll do anything else with that? Probably not. But, it was still pretty interesting. Now, of course, Hawkeye does get home for Christmas, since he got the Ronin suit, stopped the tracksuits, and didn't get killed by Yelena. I do wish they would have showed Clint spending some time with his family. They could have tacked on an extra 30 seconds to a minute to show him spending Christmas with his family, since getting back to them has been his main motivation, and he didn't make it back until the day of. Now you might say that helping Kate Bishop was his main motivation, but she only became one of his main reasons for staying in New York halfway through the series. Leaving his family in the first place was to tie up loose ends so that he could make sure his family was safe and get back to them. So yeah, it would have been nice to see a little bit more of them in the finale. Now if you watched my review of the fifth episode, I said that I didn't see Kate having enough character development by the end of the series, and she didn't. She does get her mom arrested, thus completing her own personal quest in the show. She also learns how to use trick arrows, but except for a little part at the end where they're talking about names for her before cutting to the title screen, it's really not set in stone that she is taking over as Hawkeye, at least for now. And as sort of a compliment, but also not, as well as being a critique of the show and the comic it's based on, I will say that Haley Steinfeld did a great job portraying Kate Bishop. It's just that Kate Bishop has almost always been a poorly written character. It always seems difficult for writers to do justice to a derivative character, but that's a hundred times as true when it's a tokenized character like Kate Bishop. Whenever a writer tries to make a female version of a male character or an ethnic version of a white character, they try to make the new version better by giving them few, if any, flaws while simultaneously bringing down the original to make the new one look better. It almost never ends well, and Kate Bishop, in my opinion, is no exception. Overall, though, I did really enjoy this show. Even though it was the most grounded and mundane, even though there wasn't really any room for really fun and insane theories, I think I enjoyed this series more than any other that we've gotten on Disney+. Plus. That's even despite the post credit scene for the finale showing us the entire Rogers musical, which was absolutely horrendous. But I did really enjoy getting a little bit deeper into Clint's character, seeing the Kingpin, knowing that Daredevil's on his way, seeing a little bit more with Clint's family, learning about Laura was an interesting twist at the end. Overall, it was a really fun series. Well, let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comment section below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss out on a new video. I'll see you all next time. Bye.